Welcome back to the channel. Today Tim's going to show us how to degree a camshaft. Okay, we're ready to put the time and chain and cam gear on. We're going straight up on the installation to start with. So get a straight edge, turn your crank until that runs straight through the middle of the camshaft. And then take your gear, ease it onto the camshaft, and then turn your cam to where you go through the dot and through the middle of the cam. That's gonna be the position it'll be when the timing chain is installed. Now to put the chain on. Here's where it gets fun. Get it up close to the camshaft. Notice we're not straight down. We need to drop it one length. That's where we need to be. Now when we try to push this gear on, this chain is really tight, you're going to fight this. It's going to try to push the cam back. All you have to do, reach up here and hold the camshaft, and then come back up here, and work the cam gear on. And then be sure your crank gear comes back. Now we'll get our straight edge, and we'll just verify. Right to the well, the axis a little off. There we go. And that's where we need to be. Now we can put the bolt in. Do not try to hammer this gear on. There's a plug in the back of the block that keeps the cam from going out the back and also keeps the oil from coming out the back. If you take a hammer to this thing, you're gonna have some problems. So we're just gonna run this down. I see we got. Now, it's gonna to wanna to turn. We gotta hold it still. On the engine stand, we could put two flywheel bolts in it and put a bar back there to hold it still. The snout of the crank actually is too big for the average crescent wrench. So we're just gonna go through the slot right here and then hold it. Torque is 50 foot pounds. And because we moved it, we need to roll it back and verify that our dots are still lined up. And always check after you've torqued it that your cam can still move forward and back just a bit because sometimes the thrust plate will be too thick and when you tighten it up, it'll lock everything down and you won't know till it ate everything. Okay, we're gonna go through the basic tools that you're gonna need to degree a camshaft and then we'll show you a couple others that make it a lot less frustrating. We've gotta have a degree wheel, naturally. We've gotta have a pointer that we can bolt to the block and line up with TDC in order to check our cam time. And you can use a piece of stainless wire. It works okay. If you bump it, naturally you're gonna be off. Nicer version is one of these. To attach the degree wheel to the crankshaft, you can use the balancer bolt. It's gonna be loose. Find a washer and you're gonna to have to use some washers, they're generally gonna to be too long. Find a washer that fits it snug enough that when you get it on, you can center off of these before you tighten it down, and then you'll have less run out. We want this thing to be pretty true because if it's off to one side, you can lose a degree here or there. The nicer version, this is a comp cams crank sprocket for a small block Chevrolet. They make them for a lot of different engines. This will go on the keyway. You have a set screw to lock it down. You have a half inch drive in the end. That fits the degree wheel tight. Then you can lock it down. You can hold it with a half inch drive, loosen it, turn the degree wheel, and retighten it to get your TDC. You're gonna need a magnetic base dial indicator. Something like this, like this works just fine. You really are gonna need a, a pointed tip because to check the lifter lift, you're going to want to be able to get in here to hold it still as you roll it through. If you have a flat tap at camshaft, you only need one lifter. For a roller, you need two lifters and the tie bar to hold them together so that as you're rolling it through, the lifter doesn't turn sideways and get you out of the way. Here's the cam part number, and this is the cam card for that cam that we're using in a 360 Magnum we're making this video with. Okay, we've got everything set up to degree the cam. 
And before we start, there's always people talking about some kind of voodoo about the green camshafts, like there's magic power there. If you got the right cam for the application, all we're gonna do is we're gonna verify that the cam timing in relation to the crank is what the manufacturer said it should be so that it does what we expect it to do. We're still dot to dot on our timing chain. Uh, a lot of motors, dot to dot is actually gonna be on the compression stroke. On this engine and small block Chevrolets, big block Chevrolets, they actually time on the exhaust stroke, which means the intake valve is already starting to open. We move and we see the intake is indeed opening. We need to go all the way open, back closed, and then back to top dead center. We're back to zero here, we're back to zero here. Now we can start checking the intake opening side. I'm just gonna roll it around. We're looking for six thousandths lift. There. And we are at 20.5 degrees. So we're gonna write that down over here. Then we're gonna go all the way open. Back down to 300 left. Back down to 200 left. 100 left. And then we're gonna stop at six. Again, this is so much easier with just one piston install. There. And we are at 65, 6, 67 degrees after bottom center. Okay. Now, we're going to compare that to what it's supposed to be. We are two and a half degrees late on the opening our closing is actually five degrees late um, not really sure why that is we've checked this about a dozen times rechecked our setup it is what it is but either way we're at least two and a half degrees retarded once this timing chain loosens up that's going to grow to about four degrees so if we could get four degrees advanced from here which would be two degrees advance from overall when the chain loosens up, we'll be really close to where we need to be. So we're gonna switch this thing over to four advance and see what we get. Okay, so we switched to the four advance side on the crank sprocket. Got our degree wheel centered back up. We're gonna re-verify our TDC is correct. So we're gonna come up here to 50 thousandths before. We're at 12 degrees. We'll go all the way up and then back to 50. And we are 12 degrees, the rear wheel is good. Let's see where our valve lands. Now, if the four degrees advance on the sprocket is correct, we should be around 24 and a half to 25 degrees before top dead center at 6,000 slip. Let's see if that actually works out. Well, guess what? We're 28 degrees before top center. Oh, that's odd. Back down to three, two, one, down to six. And we are 59 degrees after the bottom center. Looks like our four degree crank sprocket is actually closer to seven or eight degrees. This is why you want to use a degree wheel. Okay, so we've got some pretty large discrepancies in this timing thing. Um, we're gonna recheck our gear. We're definitely on the plus four degrees. We're gonna do the math. According to comp cams number, you can take 180 degrees, add the numbers after bottom center, and then subtract the numbers before top center, divide by two, and that's going to be your center line. We come up at 109.5 when comp calls for 110. Using the same math straight up, we come up at 113 and a quarter. When we went to four degrees advanced, we're at 105.5. 
which is a difference of seven and three quarter, almost eight degrees. So there four degrees is actually eight. Not acceptable. Where's that box? Okay guys, we're still trying to figure out how, how we could identify this problem before we do all the work to find out it doesn't work. We take 360 degrees, we've got 23 teeth on the gear. That comes out to 15.7 degrees per tooth, right at 16. Half a tooth, eight degrees. So we go to our straight up timing. The keyway dot is centered between two teeth. When we go to the 4A, the keyway is straight up on a tooth. That's half a tooth, that's eight degrees no matter how you slice it. So if you buy your timing set and you see a half a tooth difference from straight up to advance or straight up to retard, that's not gonna be right. Don't even install it. It should be half of that distance, quarter of a tooth. As you can see, I'm gonna get another timing set, so it's gonna put our short block assembly off probably another week. Um, it sucks, but it is what it is. I got more parts coming anyway, so it's okay. Um, I do want people to know, and I'll put the part number in the description, I could not find the box for this. I've got my invoice where I ordered it from Summit. I'm gonna contact them and tell them what we found. And I wanna show you, because I'm, I'm hoping they'll pull one out of a new box look at it themselves see when I first ordered all the parts I didn't want adjustable I just want straight up so I hopefully I wouldn't mess it up I messed it up anyway as anyone who's seen the previous videos knows but I ordered a double roller this is not a double roller this is a double row I wasn't even paying enough attention to catch that I was just excited to slap it together and you can see the timing discrepancies this anyone else doing this you think you're oh advanced at four degrees now you're eight retarded four you're eight that's that's a big that's a big jump so they need to fix this i don't know what they're going to do since i lost the box but it's summit they've, they've always taken good care of me i've never really had any problems dealing with their customer service so i'm sure they'll take care of this but i just want to show you the part number on their site it was a mopar performance thing and i thought i was doing right it was more a little more expensive than the cloys one but I thought I'm going Mopar Performance. It's a Mopar. You gotta be doing the right thing. Uh, apparently not this time. Now I don't know who's responsible for what is supposed to be in that box and what actually was. But I'll work that out with Summit. I'm sure they'll take care of it. But check this out. That's what I ordered. That's what's supposed to be. One keyway. Now, now that we've done the alignment and you don't even know straight up on a good timing set might be fine that might be exactly where we need to be but now that we're actually going to degree the cam in properly we need an adjustable set so we got our part number our picture our price time and chain included time and chain style double roller one bolt non-adjustable so it's just all wrong I'm just going to put us back a little more. Hopefully I can exchange it or something. If not, it just sucks. I'll just have to eat it and buy another one. I'll get a Cloyce this time. I just thought I was doing right by getting Mopar. I was wrong. Or possibly wrong. It was a brand new box when I got it. I really wish I could find it. But I can't. So I've also seen in some forums that other people have had. They didn't catch the 8 degree problem. And this may not be. We don't know at what, what year since they've had that part number, since they've been selling it like this, because I've seen other people use the same part number, if something happened in the machining process and it got off, or was it off from day one? Either way, we'll work that out. We'll get something else, we'll make it right. Um, well, yeah, so, if you haven't gotten there this long, thank you for watching. We'll keep giving you as much information as we can. For anyone else running into this, this is from my supercharged Dodge Dakota. It's a 360 Magnum engine we were using, but it's all pretty generic on the small block degreeing stuff. It's not, the process isn't any different. It's the same thing. So, anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.